Hi, Elton. How you doing? Oh, man, I forgot something. Hang on. Oh. Uh, let's I'm checking my uh my sound here. Let me see if I got my uh my good microphone. Oh good. Okay. Does this sound a little better now, uh in that something? Yes, no. Can you hear me okay? Hi Mark. Okay, good. Okay, got it, everything. Hi, Eddie. Uh, <laughs> mm. uh, Bruce, watch habit. How you doing? Sounds good and video is great. Okay, good. I What I found out is that uh, I've got to restart uh, everything. Hi, Junior. And um, if I restart everything, turn off my iPhone, and get it down to just right. Uh, everything is cleaned up. You know, everything's out of there. Okay. Um, uh, today. Uh, oh, good. Uh, thanks, Eddie. Uh, uh, today, what I want to do is. Yeah, right. <laughs> it's it's sort of an antibody <laughs> to certain things. Uh, hey, Williams, how you doing? <laughs> uh, well, I tell you, it's always good to, whenever I see someone, uh, you know, show up to these i know they're okay otherwise <laughs> they're not on a ventilator somewhere so i guess that uh, we we sort of have a a, a mutually reassuring <laughs> session here uh hi oscar how's it going uh work at home i say hello and goodbye uh adios <laughs> uh let's see general greetings from williams watches very nice. <laughs> yeah. uh, I don't know if any of you saw it today. Uh, earlier today, I did a little uh, vest pocket video on. Um, see if I can say this right. Hajime uh, Asaka. And uh, anyway. All right, well, you guys about ready to get started? Um, let me sort of remind us sort of where we are and and uh, what we're going to be doing. I got a um, I brought my tools here that we that we need, and I can I can show you some of this. I hope without dropping something. This morning I brought out a movement and the and the thing fell out of the case. <laughs> I got to be careful with everything. Um, uh, I don't go to horology talk anymore. Uh, I got a real good reason not to. So I'll leave it at that. Um, so uh, anyhow, guys, um, let's talk about um, let's talk about this about putting a putting the uh, hands on. Now, let me tell you what, what I did. Uh, let me get my stuff out here. Um, okay. Uh, before, right here and here are the tightening screws. And so uh, I had the, I had the, uh, the dial on. Okay, let me pull it out here. I got something else I want to, another gizmo I want to show everybody. Uh, on the back of it, they're tightening uh, screws. And before you, uh, what what happens is that the feet go into the, the feet from the dial, go into the movement. 
and then you tighten them. Otherwise, it's loose and will fall out. And you want to do that before you put the hands on. So today, what we're going to look at is how to put the hands on. So the first thing I did was to make sure that this, these two screws had a, had a hold of the uh, dial. Uh, one thing that I did is that I turned it and and sort of give it a little tug on the uh, <coughs> excuse me a little tug on the dial to make sure it held and so one side was fine and it was secure and then I tipped the other side and popped right up so I put it back in and and uh, did it again it's it's a funny thing because you're sort of dealing with this little half circle kind of thing and when you turn it uh the the flat side is goes up against the uh the dial uh the yeah the dial foot uh to secure it so anyway uh that was the first thing uh that I had to do and everything went well on that thank goodness so the next thing now is that we're ready to put the uh, hands on so let's take a look at uh, at how we do that we start with uh, these are the the tweezers. I think I use their two of, two of them. There's number two, which are the long ones, and number five, which are the shorter of the two. And so uh, here's the here are the tweezers right here, and here's the hour hand, and you just put it hold it flat, and then you take that circle part and put it right over the um, over the um, the shaft, I guess, what you call it. So I, I made a little arrow pointing to the shaft. Now there's there's a wide part and then a narrow part, and it's got to go over the wide part. That is why uh, you can spot the hour hand because it has the biggest circle on the end of it. Over here, I got a little arrow pointing to you can I don't know you probably can't see it, but um, there's you can see the shaft for the second hand. Um, Doing that is, is to me, is a, or at least the way I do it, it looks like a three ring circus. Okay, so that's uh, the first thing we do. Now, the second thing, once we have the, um, once we have the, uh, the hour hand over the shaft, uh, you push it down if you have a, one of these things. This is called a hand setter. Okay, we talked about this before, but when you use it, you simply put it right above it and push it down. Now, it, sometimes it, it'll be a little crooked or this or that, and you have to move this around a little. Now, the other thing that you can do, I got one of these gizmos, and I see if I can, I got to hold it nice and steady. Uh, what you do is you just push that right down on top of the let me see if I can do it without everything falling off and it goes right on top of the hand and there's a hole in the bottom of this little there's a little uh, like a nylon head on it and the nylon heads have different size holes uh, the largest for the hour hand and then smaller ones for the minute hand and almost solid ones for the second hand because that thing is it's really small. Okay. Um, so now, okay. So now they got the watch is, we got the, uh, uh, the hour hand on. The next thing we'll have to do is, on top of that, we'll put the uh, minute hand, which has a smaller hole, and the shaft, the width of the shaft is, is smaller. Now, remember on the, let me see if I got it here, the hour hand, This is the the shaft. There's the little shaft that comes up from here, and uh, this gear is for the hour hand. And then this goes on top of it before you put on the uh, dial over it. Okay, and then once you have the dial over it, uh, this is what you're looking at. Okay, you can see there's sort of a a fatter circle and a thinner circle, 
and the 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 narrower one is for the uh, minute hand, and uh, we'll have to do that later because I just <laughs> it's I try to do too much at once and everything falls apart. Okay, so what are you guys up to? Uh, okay, watch habit. Uh, he's been okay, doke. Um, I tried something out a few times, but never responded, so I gave up. Uh, <laughs> boy, I'm missing some. There's a whole other conversation going on. Uh, Bill, I'm in the process of making a couple of dials. I'm using 24 karat gold and palladium for the indices. Uh, I'm going to do a hand engraved one and a textured one similar to uh, uh, hand hammer dials. Oh, wow. Well, you, you see your way ahead of where I am. I, I am sort of like just outside of the starting gate. Um, I have some, there's a guy here in the, in the Hartford area. Uh, and after this whole uh, quarantine thing is over, he and I are going to get together. He makes um, enameled uh, dials. And so he and I have got to, got to have a word. And what I can do is uh, simply, you know, tell them exactly the dial that I want and have them make it for me uh, with uh, out of enamel. I was going to play around with it myself, but I'd probably burn down the house with you know, pulling all the kind of stuff you have to do with it. But uh, Williams, uh, what you're doing really sounds, you know, way, way, way advanced, at least for someone like myself. It sounds like a lot of fun. There's a, 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 a friend of mine um, was he, he he took up sort of polishing parts of it. And uh, I think he took a course of working with some kind of master on it and getting all of the every the, the watch polish. Polishing a watch apparently is more involved than I realized. Uh, they charge 500 bucks to polish my uh Oh, uh, what was it? The um, oh, see, gold, platinum, my platinum. That was it. Platinum apparently is very hard to polish, right? And so I got <laughs> that was a pretty. I, next time I have it serviced, I'm like, I, they don't have to polish it for me. Uh, the reason why is it, you know, if you use your watch a lot, the polish will sort of go away. It looks really good for a while. Uh, but I would learn, like to learn how to polish too, and and also too the um, I saw that uh, Eddie had done some of this. Eddie had had done some really nice on lodge on the um, on the movement, and uh, that looks really cool. Sort of like a you know doing the the you know, according to the high horology uh, guys that one of the criteria is good finishing. Okay, uh, what else is going on? Um, oh, that's what I do with uh, jewelry. Oh, okay, cool, William. Uh, th then you know you it's not something you can't just, you know, take a Brillo pad and go to town on some gold <laughs> or platinum. <laughs> that's one thing I found out. Um, uh, let's see. Oh, you're going to make a video? Good, 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 good. That'll be fun. Make a series of them so we can follow them and figure out how to do it. Um, okay, hard to be like Rolex. You uh, have to know their secrets. I would imagine so, and they've got a lot of them. Uh, the, uh, the guy who graduated from a Rolex, uh, I guess, watchmaker school that I met, he showed me his watches, really. I mean, he had, they had totally redone all of the uh, uh, the plates and bridges and replaced them with new ones and all kinds of things like that. That was, yeah. That, <laughs> uh, I have another place I'm going with, with this, and I've got a, this friend of mine uh, uh, in, out in Asia has something that uh, he got, and so I, I've got to get it, my hands on it and then start putting together sort of uh, something I've wanted to do for a while. Uh, you know, the, the thing of it is, is that if you have a good movement, uh, 
and ATAs are good. I mean, they're they're fine, really. But I mean, if you want like a really good one, something that you get from Boucher, for example, the problem with Boucher, you, you know, you you got to buy twenty five of them uh, at a time. You know, another one, uh, maybe after this whole stupid thing is over, uh, some of these watch companies might say, wait a minute, you know, we got a gold mine here with all these these uh, pretentious <laughs> watchmakers like Bill. <laughs> we'll sell them a, a really expensive movement, and that would be fine with me. I would love to get one of those uh, movements from Lang and Hine. That would be just great. And then build a watch around that and get a, a case from uh, Wooten Lonnen and uh, Kalen and, you know, just get all of the parts and put together a really good watch. The, 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 um, and then I find out there's a guy who does uh, uh, enamel dials who doesn't live too far from me. And I've got an idea for that, too, so I can cook up my own watch. And, um, you know, I'm still... And really, just for a fraction of what you'd uh, you'd pay otherwise. Uh, and, and looking at the um, uh, Soko watches, the um, beautiful watches. I mean, they're <laughs> really amazing ones, but expensive. My God, they're really expensive. And since I like a simple watch like the Tsunami, which is a three-hand watch, uh, that's what we're putting together here. You know, it's sort of like, you know, all we got to do is get uh, certain things that are, are a little better uh, to begin with, and you can end up with a really nice watch. Okay, what's going on? I play an oboe. I used to play a cornet <laughs> badly. Okay, found a Damascus steel blanks on eBay, uh, but no second uh, handhold not round and no feet on them. The quest continues. Mark, let me show you what I found. I don't I don't know if I, the problem is I'm not sure where I found them. Uh, ah, here we go. I, I saw these. Yeah, oh, I know where I got them. I think they're like at Isinger, Esinger. And um, they're these blank dials. And they have what I was, my idea was, my grand plan was to uh, enamel them. And they only have a single hole in the middle. And so if I got a hold of a, either a, a watch with central seconds or um, with no seconds at all, which I like perfectly fine, uh, what I could do is that I could, Put together a watch for this. I have another one, and it's got a bunch of little holes. I mean, it's just like this, and I think they're both from Essinger. Uh, yeah, here it is. And it's got, I got two, one with a bunch of little holes, and the one with the little holes, what you're supposed to be able to, let's see, is this it or did I get? Yeah, this one has all these little holes around it. Uh, you have to turn it the right angle. It's hard to see here. But what you can do is you can get these little, um, numbers and um, index uh, sticks, and then you just put them on here and push them in, I guess. I don't know. I figured, you know, they weren't that expensive. I thought, well, I'll get two of them and see what I can do. You know, it, it's fun to have, you know, sort of weird toys like that to uh, and I play around with. You know, in case, like, you have to stay at home with nothing to do. Um, oh, man. You guys have... I love music, and I'm so bad at it because I'm, I have crummy hearing. Let's do the best I can. Um, most people polish uh, taking the uh, uh, case uh, to the polisher uh, freehand, and that's the wrong way to polish unless you are highly skilled and have experience with the machines and different metals. Yeah, I know. That's how come I'm afraid to mess with it. Hi, Mark. Uh, hey, hey, that's neat. You know, maybe what we can do, uh, we got a cello player, an oboe player. Uh, like I said, I'm not 
I, you know, whatever thing, we'll, and we'll see if we can put an orchestra together here somehow. That'd be fun. Uh, what watch uh, uh, today? I have on somebody had asked me about this one, uh, and it's my um, Zenus Elite uh, GMT, and uh, this little watch is. I I hate to use the term bulletproof, but it seems to be. I mean, it it keeps perfect time. When I first got it, I sent it to uh, there used to be this uh, a guy who was a watchmaker, and I uh, sent it to him. He he I guess did the uh, lubrication or something to it. And he says he says you know he said your watch is in perfect shape. <laughs> did, didn't prevent him from charging me three hundred and fifty bucks. Uh, you know, for a lube job. And so, anyway, uh, but this watch has been great. Every time I wear it, it's, I, the reason I don't wear it too much, I got it for a GMT, and then I got that big Parmigiani uh, hemispheres, and I, I that is much better for uh, travel. Okay, let's see. Um, I was looking at watch moves today from China, copies of ETA. Yeah, that's that's ex in fact that's exactly uh, what I have here. I got these. Uh, I think I was showing you guys these yesterday. Uh, these watches are um, are knockoffs of the sixty four ninety eight, and you can, and the one that we're working on here is a knockoff of the sixty four ninety seven, or it's a real sixty four ninety seven. I, I end up with all these things around I get and then I break something and can't and then put it aside and come back to it and then go off and buy another movement. I mean I've got I got two of those little um, movements that you use for uh, for making regulators. And I have <laughs> I don't know when I'll get to them. Um, yeah, hey, yeah, the the uh, oh man, there's this place in LA that you can get uh, Chinese um, movements from that aren't the normal ones. I mean, they're not like Siegel, but they're from sort of this big conglomerate of uh, move uh, parts and movement makers in China. And uh, I've got some of that. It worked perfectly well. And if you're making watches and you don't know what you're doing and you have no skills, um, it's, you know, why spend a lot of money on a, you know, getting an ETA or something? Uh, let's see. I was looking at watch, okay, from China, what else? Um, yeah, <laughs> color coordinated, Mark. Okay. Um, how are we doing on time? Well, we got a little time up. Um, is, is, what is, what would be another topic we could kick around, um, I've got a whole bunch of watches uh, from a source in west of where we are. And um, we can look at some of those. And there's, there's, I mean, whatever you guys think would be worth looking at. Uh, what are some brands that we could uh, take a look at that you see people don't look at? I was very surprised on the uh, butcher to find out that they had bought THA. And so it became part of Carl Butcher's uh, stuff. Any ideas here? Oh, I think, you know, um, yeah, right. <laughs> Dornbluth. Okay. Dornbluth. Yeah, a lot of people have been talking about it. Uh, Doran Bluth, a long time ago, I did something on that. There was a father and son, I think, and uh, they had been living in the East Germany. And then after the reunification, they were able to do certain things. And it's sort of an interesting story. Mertz Grossmann. Okay. Uh, Mertz Grossmann is interesting. I, you know, um, Christine Hutter is the, is the CEO, but she's also a watchmaker. And I really don't know to what extent um, 
I, I, well, obviously she's involved, but I don't know sort of the conglomerate or the arrangement of watchmakers they have. Uh, what uh, Hutter did was that she comes from a watchmaking family uh, in uh, the Guasuda area, and she um, she bought the rights to use Maurice Grossman. And uh, then she started the company, and uh, they have a really beautiful factory there that they built. But I don't know. It's it's a they make good watches, but they're really they're, I they're a tad's expensive. I'll put it that way. Uh, I hope their uh, prices tank so I can get one. <laughs> yeah, that'd be nice. Um, uh, I really, I'm really liking German watches lately. Yeah, you know, this is what I like about Moser. Moser is in the so, uh, sort of the German part, Strasshausen or something like that. There's a famous uh, waterfall right next to him. Uh, that part of Switzerland. So you have both a lot of Swiss influence and a lot of German influence. In fact, um, Rolf Lang worked there for. Uh, for with uh, Moser, eh, like 10, 12 years, uh, quite a while, he did a lot of work for him. He also worked with Elanga. And so you have a you have a Swiss company with German influence, which I thought was interesting. I mean, of course, Switzerland is is German, French, and Italian, and, and uh, Rom Romosque or something like that. Interesting, interesting country. Uh, Schaffhausen, yeah, that's the one, Eddie, Schaffhausen. I like to make up German names, so <laughs> if I mispronounce it with a German accent, I hope nobody knows. Uh, let's see. Moser does not get influenced too much by IWC. They don't get influenced at all from what I see. They don't get influenced by anybody <laughs> except, well, now I think the only thing that's had some influence on them is the market, but you know, uh, the thing about uh, H. Moser is they have a huge hunk of their business is from their um, hair springs. The, uh, the hair springs they have are, they, you know, it's what, a couple thousand washers a year and uh, 30, 40,000 uh, sales of hair springs doing some very interesting stuff. Uh, the way in which their hairsprings were made is really interesting because uh, they used a combination of niobium and uh, titanium. And so it, to, to make this non-magnetic hairspring, and it's apparently very popular, and there's so many watch companies that use it that never tell you that they're using that. Uh, I have a geo and looking at uh, Longa and Dornbluth. Yeah, I tell you something else, Mark, that you might want to look at uh, that uh, is uh, is Lang and Hine, and because I got a, from what I understand, uh, they're starting to negotiate, and also uh, from um, uh, uh, Rolf Lang. Uh, Rolf Lang stuff is. I mean, it's, it's just like, you know, I, I think he's going to be like a Van Gogh painting is that nobody, nobody recognized his stuff until he was gone. But uh, his stuff is really amazing. Um, okay. Eddie, you know, <laughs> go stand in a corner or something. <laughs> Okay, what else do you guys have? A precision engineer, and yeah. What I was, uh, what I did the other day, uh, I was wondering about, you know, well, who is precision engineering? And uh, it's the same way with uh, Beauvais' uh, Demier. If you go and you look at the individual watchmakers, the people who are who are actually designing and, and creating them, boy, the ones that H. Moser has at precision engineering are, are really amazing. The guys who work at Beauvais get, the, get up. And they have their their workbenches on in the upper floors of the chalet, and you looking out over the Alps. That place is a is an amazing place for watchmakers. Okay, uh, 
Yeah, Eddie. <laughs> All right, guys. Uh, Eddie, oh, I know what it is. Clyde's not here, so <laughs> you're going to be my Clyde for today. Well, guys, uh, it, time is up, and I've got to run. And um, once we're finished with this project, I'm going to start working on my um, uh, do-it-yourself residence watch or residence gizmo. So everybody stay safe and hope to see you next time. Oh, and check out the uh, Hadami um, video. Take care. <laughs>